Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. I am helping you on your pilgrimage to Chap Nirvana. And of course, on a pilgrimage you want comfortable footwear because we're going to be travelling over quite some distance. And today I'm joined by the Clark's original desert boot because it has been said that Clark's desert boots revolutionized men's casual footwear when they were first introduced way back in the 1950s. They allowed men another opportunity to wear something different on their feet from dress shoes, work boots and the like. And they are still very firmly with us today in the modern era, providing a great style option for gentlemen Presumably, mostly within the warmer months of year because they're not necessarily a four season boot, but certainly I have owned these boots since the spring of 2020. I did an initial review on them, video review, when I first purchased them, and I did a one year on the feet review. So I'd had them for 12 months and I conducted a review of them after that point. Well, I've subjected them to three full years of service. We're now in the summer of 2023. So we're well over three years of service. And I think it's about time that I talk to you about my experience with this most iconic of all men's footwear and tell you about my thoughts of the ownership experience over this prolonged and intense period of wearing. Okay, so the Clark's Desert Boot has been a staple in my wardrobe for, well, most of my adult life. In fact, as a boy, I wore desert boots and certainly as a younger man. However, it's fair to say in my 30s and 40s, I kind of strayed away from Clark's Desert Boots or the Desert Boot aesthetic in general, and there weren't any in my wardrobe. However, in 2020, I decided it was time to get a little bit more stylish in the summer months. And I purchased this pair of Clark's Original Desert Boots in sand suede colour uh, from the Clark's Boot or Shoe Outlet, in fact, because I live about 20 miles from Clark's Shoes home base. And, uh, you know, the original factory no longer make shoes there, it's distribution center these days. And these boots were actually made in Vietnam. And I understand they're made in other locations around the world. But that is not to say the Clark's Desert boot is still not an excellent item to bring into your wardrobe. Now, because I purchased it from an outlet, I paid 60 British pounds for this perfect pair of Clark's boots, desert boots. However, if you went into a retail outlet, you would pay £120 at the current price. They've gone up a little over the years. I've noticed they're gaining a little bit of momentum in their upward trajectory, but still at £120, I think it's a very approachable price for an exceptionally wearable and practicable a boot to add to your collection. So let me tell you something about this most iconic of British boots, which it is rumoured to be the most widely worn chucker boot in the world. So it has made an imprint, pardon the pun, on the, uh, on the, the shoe wearing community. Quick synopsis of the history of these boots. Uh, way back in the Second World War, um, there was a chap called Nathan Clark. Now he was a member of the big famous Clark's Shoe Factory family and he was serving in the British Army out there in the Far East in Burma and Africa and places like that and he noticed that many of his fellow soldiers were not wearing the issued large clumpy leather hobnail boots in the sort of jungle and desert environment. In fact they were wearing a boot like this. So he inquired of his fellow soldiers where did you get your boots? And they directed him to a bazaar in Egypt, in Cairo, I believe, where there was a bootmaker who made this style of boot specifically for soldiers. And he bought several pairs of these boots, brought them back to the UK at the end of the war, and revealed them to the family and said, I think this could be a bit of a runner for us as a new product. They weren't too sure about it. In fact, they took until the 1950s to release the Clark's Desert boot and hence unleash them upon the world to which they became an incredibly popular and very desired boot in 
the shoe wearing community and for good reason because this is a very simple pair of boots and as you will know simplicity is often the key to success when it comes to quality anything let alone shoes why is it simple? Okay, let me tell you about this boot. Now, this particular one is a great example. They come in different materials. You can buy them in uh, sort of um, waxed leather and things like that. But this one is in the basic unlined suede. So you have a very simple material which the boot is made of. And as you can probably see, all right, and I'll throw some images up here as well. The upper of this pair of boots is made from only two two pieces of material which are stitched together. As simple as that. And as you can see, it's a Derby style boot. So um, the lacing is sort of external to the main body of it. And it's a two eyelet lacing system. Again, incredibly simple. So these two pieces of leather stitched together, two eyelets, two laces inside, unlined, simple as you can have. And the sole, well, this is where it gets a lot of its reputation. The sole is made of a material called crepe. Now, crepe is actually a byproduct of the rubber making industry, and it is, in effect, coagulated latex, all right? So it's a, it's a thick, strong, gummy material, rubber in nature, which is on first, you know, you can crush it, you can, it's malleable. It's quite uh, soft and yielding to the touch which makes it incredibly comfortable as well. But as you can see, uh, it has a natural color initially, but after you've worn them for a while, they take on you know, the dirt from the ground that you're stepping on, but actually they work rather well. Talk about that in a moment, but the boot in itself, quite simple. The upper is then stitched directly by way of a welt uh, to that um, crepe sole. And there you have a very simple boot. And as you can see, it rises to just about the ankle height. So it's a quite a low chucker boot in all reality, but it's very simple. But as you know, simple can be very stylish. Now, as you know, comfort is king when it comes to footwear because we spend so much of our lives relying upon our shoes to keep us comfortable, warm, dry, or whatever requirements you have of your footwear. And when it comes to the old desert boot, Comfort is certainly one of its strong points because straight out of the box, there's no break-in required here because we have soft, unlined suede on the upper. No hot spots, no blisters, no discomfort, as long as you've got a pair of shoes which fits you well, and I will suggest that the Clark's Desert Boot is a, is a true to size fit, so I'm a UK size eight, this is a UK size eight pair of boots, they fit me perfectly and I found that to be the case in other, you know, true to size fitting footwear as well. UK 8 fits me perfectly when they're true to size. So the desert boot, true to size. Uh, nice soft upper, no problem with that at all. Because of its unlined nature, it's also quite cool in the summertime. So this makes it an ideal summer boot. That grippy um, crepe sole has the big advantage of being very uh, soft, springy to step, and it absorbs all of the you know rough ground. So if you're walking across gravel, if you're walking across grass, if you're walking all day on pavement, this crepe sole is just going to take it all in its stead. No problems at all. Very comfortable, very uh, all round pleasant to wear boot. In fact, I have been wearing these shoes now for more than three seasons, three years rather, and three seasons over those three years. I have given them quite a thrashing, never done anything to them. I've run them over with a stiff brush occasionally. And as you can see, the durability has stood the test of time, as have the comfort. I would say these boots have become almost slipper-like in their level of comfort to me over these last three years. You know, they are a joy to put on and take off, which is also quite an easy process because you've only got a two eyelet lacing system, slipping the boots on and off when you're going in and out of the house or into the garden, whatever. It's a very easy process because these boots make it so by their comfort and their ease of putting them on or off. So when we look at the way that my boots here have weathered the passing of time, I would say 
they have definitely faded. All right, they were much more of a sandy color. And looking at the, the, the toe, the vamp of the shoe here, it's definitely faded a few shades lighter because as I say, I tend to wear them in the summer months and ultraviolet light is absolutely, you know, unrelenting and it, it does, you know, it leaches the color from things. And I would say they have actually uh, lost some of their color. However, the actual suede itself has not been compromised in any way. It's still all in good condition. And as I say, the only thing I've ever done to maintain these is to run a brush over them occasionally. If there's dirt or detritus on there, I've run a stiff brush over, wiped it off, that's it. I've never applied any uh, sort of, you know, waterproofing, any of the various suede sprays that you can buy. This is as natural as it comes. It's a pair of boots who've been hammered and never really looked after. And yet they've come through it, well, absolutely with gold star status. Now, when we look at the sole, now this is where I was expecting the boots to have a bit of vulnerability because that crepe being made of a rubber product, when you're walking over pavements, over rough terrain, uh, on a day-by-day -day basis, you would expect it to wear down rather quickly. Three years I've been wearing these. Admittedly, not every season, all right? But I have to say, the actual wear down of the heel is very, very positive. Not, not a lot at all. And, you know, it's noticeable there is some wear down, but not significantly so. Looking at the attrition rate of the sole of these boots, I'm gonna say, I think the, the actual main body of the boot is gonna wear out before the heel although there's no sign of it at this point. I mean, there is wear, clearly. I've been wearing them a lot. And, you know, the sole is not as stiff and as robust as it was three years ago. But certainly, I'm gonna say there's two, three years of future wear at my current level of wearing these still ahead in these boots, which I think, you know, for 60 British pounds, admittedly, I got them half price because I bought them from a factory shop but um, if you were to pay 120 pounds of these and you would get six years of wear out of them pretty rugged wear i think that's quite an approachable price so there we go i would say i've changed the laces on these they were uh, the laces were the same color as the suede initially but i well i wanted to jazz them up a little so i just changed the laces i think it looks rather nice so i left them in this way now what i would say about these boots particularly the sole whilst they're great for absorbing you know the stresses of walking around in the summer months because they're quite grippy and the hotter it gets the more gummy the sole gets so it does get a little bit more uh, grippy in the hot hot time of year in the winter time when there's wet or ice anywhere at all these soles offer no protection from slipping and sliding, all right? They are not the best boots for the winter season. So I would not recommend these when it gets rather chilly, rather wet, and there's a likelihood of ice. For me, in about October, these go into the back of the wardrobe and they will stay there until the May of the following year, when the weather changes, I can bring them out again and I can employ them in service with all of my summer attire. Now, when it comes to styling the desert boot, over the last three years, I have found them to be an incredibly versatile item within my wardrobe and certainly within my footwear collection. And I think many men will find that the desert boot is a great entry point into the world of slightly more stylish men's footwear. Now, if you're used to wearing trainers or tennis shoes, you might find the thought of stepping up into a dress boot as a leap too far. However, the desert boot seems to occupy a space in men's footwear, which is definitely a step higher than casual footwear, but a step lower than more formal attire. So it offers a good entry point into the world of boots. If you're not really ready to invest a pile of money and start wearing, you know, a dress brogue or something like that. And I've been able to wear this in a wide variety of styles within my wardrobe. So maybe you're wearing denim jeans, all right? The most casual of trousers that you can find. 
these will go rather well with them. In fact, the nice contrasting colours, and incidentally, I should say, they're available in a wide variety of different suedes, different colours, from the quite garish to the quite conservative, as I've gone for here. You can also have leathers, you can have black leather, burgundy leather, there's all sorts of different colours out there, which will fit your personal style. But I've found they look great with jeans. They also look great with chinos of all different colours. I went for a sort of neutral sand colour, which allows them to be worn with a wide variety of my chinos in the warmer months. And somewhat uniquely for boots, I think you will find, they're also easily wearable with shorts, because originally these would have been worn by, by soldiers when they were wearing their shorts. And I think that carries across to the modern world. You can easily wear these with cargo shorts, slightly more formal shorts, they absolutely can straddle that area between you know casual footwear and slightly more less casual. Let's not pretend they're formal, they are not, but you can definitely pull them off with the more uh, semi-formal clothing if you need to in the warmer months. So what are the pros, what are the cons? The pros, they are rugged, right? Three years going strong, no sign of faltering at all. They are iconic. The Clark's Desert boot is a boot which is regarded by people as being a good crossover between different styles. It's also regarded because of its history. You know, it goes back into the annals of men's style when it was function over form. These boots were designed for a purpose and they did the job rather well. Um, they are cheap as well. Let's not pretend, you know, they're not very expensive. £120 if you buy them at full price or shop around, definitely never pay full price. Always try and get them at a reduced price, but a really approachable price point for a pair of boots that will steer you well over, you know, half a decade really. And finally, on the pro side, versatility. You can wear them with jeans, you can wear them with chinos when you're out at the golf club. They really do have the ability to cross that border between formal and semi-formal and casual surprisingly well. And if there are pros, there must be cons. The cons are, these are not a winter boot, right? You can't buy these boots and wear them all throughout the year and expect them to perform for you. It's not gonna happen. Winter time, you've gotta put them away. The other con, I would say, is the crepe sole. It works well, but it's not pretty, as you can see. It's not attractive. So you've gotta bear that into account. And finally, the con is somewhat casual. If you are looking for a boot that covers all bases, I would say, whilst I've sung the praises of the desert boot, it's still towards the casual, and if you are wanting something which you can wear, you know, with your chinos more than your jeans, maybe this is that little bit too casual for you. But consider your lifestyle and how they would fit in. So, my final conclusion on the Clark's original desert boot. After three years of totally rugged use, I can say, Without hesitation, these are the most worn pair of shoes or boots that I have in my collection. And believe me, I have an embarrassingly large collection of footwear. And that's because they are durable, they are rugged, they are tough, they're iconic, and they're just so easy to wear in so many situations. And they are lasting well, like a good pair of troopers. And they have that slipper-like comfort level. So they're definitely staying in my collection for a few years to come. I'm delighted that I've got on so well with them, having come back to the Clark's Desert Boot after many years away. So, there we go. A ringing endorsement after three years of solid wear. What more can I say? If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, click the old subscribe button. If you'd like to add to the dialogue, tell me what you think about the Clark's Desert Boot in the comment section below. If you want to support the channel, you could either buy me a coffee or become a patron. And my patrons re receive additional video content over at my patrons page, where we've got a bit of a thriving Chaps Guide patron community going and uh, special events and things as well I make available to my patrons over there. And you'll see their names at the end of the video. And if you want to know more about that, look down in the show notes below. So until the next video, take care of yourselves. Wear your desert boots as I do in every situation with total confidence. And I will see you again very soon.